I'm in there, right? How you guys doing today? Whew. Are we up? Hey, 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 how you guys doing? Okay. How's everything? Happy Father's Day to you, man. Um, I hope everything is all right up there um, in the MPLS. Welcome to Funk Music with Zach. Yeah, it's kind of today. Okay, um, I can't quite hear you. Just speak up a little bit, if you could. I said the energy is calm right now here in Minneapolis. Um, good, good. Like, good. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's going on under the table, so you know, you know the game. You know what's happening. That's right. That's right. Let me just shut up. I was just getting my AC shut up over there. Yes. Yeah, so, um, welcome. Um, today, you know, we're going to be definitely debuting some serious new tracks. Um, first of all, welcome to the IBM TV family. Um, you know, we have Emerald and, and Vanessa and is beautiful. And, and thank you for having me on. You see, I'm, I'm repping today for you guys, my Purple Rain shirt. So, <laughs> so yeah, the vibe here in North Carolina, um, you know, it's still about the same. You know, we're just trying to get through everything we're trying to get through. And, you know, we're going to make some stuff happen. Um, you guys look beautiful as always. You know what I mean? And don't worry about the extra time at the top. Because we'll make sure we get all your music in. You know what I mean? It's all good. I think, let me just put in my um, earphones. That's why I think I need to hear you. Hold on one second. Okay. All right, now I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm good. All right. All yeah, right. yeah. That's a lot better for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So listen, man. Um, We've been Facebook friends, you know, for a minute or two, and we've been, um, you know, vibing back and forth, you know, as well as with, you know, Vanessa there. And yeah. um, tell me something about, you know, just in general. Um, I know you're, you're, you know, an artist and musician, and you know all these great things, and you know, you, you take great photographs. Everybody's always complimenting you. I watch your Facebook page, how it just blows up. You two guys together. Um, you know, exhume, you know, unconditional love. And that's a beautiful uh, thing. So oh, first, thank you. it's thank you. true. Tell me a little bit about that first. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, about us? Yeah. yeah. How, how did you guys meet and everything? How did that come oh, about? Oh. <laughs> you don't have to go, you don't have to say all the details. Just give me a little oversight. You want a quarterback? I'll, I'll want a quarterback this way. All right, you so want a quarterback this way. I had seen him also on Facebook, and I could tell that he was on some sort of a new journey, and I was starting a new journey. And I was really loving his space, right? Which I found out it wasn't the space. He was the space, but I wanted to cheat out in his space because it looked so cool. I'm like, I'm putting it on my bucket list. And... One day I was here and I was getting ready to go out to Paisley Park and just chill in a tunnel, write some poetry, just chill out. And, a, uh, well, a friend of mine at that time, she was like, hey, I'm going to go over to Mel's. You want to go? And I'm like, yeah. So I came over and I never left. <laughs> hey, well, that, that's all it takes. That's good. I love your Buddhas in the background. I see them back there. I love that. Oh, thank you. That's what's yeah. up. That's what I constantly keep my guys and ladies with me all the time, as you can see. That's yeah, very spiritual. Nice. That's very spiritual. That's so, cool. so you get ready to drop some new tracks. You got some new music out, um, you know, and you're going to do some stuff live for us today, right? Well, I'll definitely play you the tracks that coming your way. That's forthcoming from the Cosmic Soul album. That's what I want. I have to replicate live other than me saying something. Yeah, like, and that's good enough. You know what I mean? Um, so tell me a little bit about your, your musical background as far as when you started really getting into this thing on a serious level. Ooh, on a serious level. Uh-huh. Well, if we're going from a serious level, that would be from the time of two years old. There you go. That's yeah. what. That's the it. Very first, the very first thing I heard that stuck out in my head was the bass line from the Temptation song. Okay. My papa was a Rolling Stone, but people moving in, people moving out, why? Because of the color of the skin. Oh, run, 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 run
So there you, you go. Know, yes, like yes. Two years old, right? And um, I, you know, I started listening to music. Al Green was one of the first singers that actually um, I really took serious as a young boy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then there was um, the Jacksons when they came on site. Oh my God, that just blew everybody away, right? Yeah. And everybody was growing the afros like Foster Silvers and Michael and Jermaine and those guys trying to see who had big And, you know, Prince was doing that big <laughs> yeah, of course, of that. Of course, we know your connection there for sure. So, right. So when I really started taking it very serious is when my eldest brother, John, said he busted my room one day and he was like, Ermel, um, I'm gonna take you to a concert. I'm like, what? A concert? He goes, Yeah, we're going to see Parliament Funkadelic and the Bar Hayes. This was my very first concert, right? <laughs> So you know. I was highly impacted by that as a young boy because I noticed something that George Clinton was doing, which inspired me to this day as a producer of songwriter. Um, yes. I noticed that he was creating all these aliases, Star Child and Dr. Funkenstein and Cernos and all these different funk entities, you know, and um, that was one of the things that intrigued me about him as well as the content of what he was writing about. Yeah. A, well as the alias bands, Funkadelic, uh, uh, the Brides of Funkenstein, the Horny Horns, all these people. Um, you know, Bootsy as well. And, and, and all these people that inspired me, inspired me to write this album right here, Cosmic Soul. I and love that. Deep into the Ohio Flares. Yes, yes, yes. Love the Ohio right, 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 right. Yes, yes, they don't get enough credit. You know what I mean? They oh, really don't. God. But the Ohio players just blew it up for me because when I saw when Sugarfoot came on, I got into the Ohio players prior to Sugarfoot came on. Right, right. That's how deep this thing goes. Um, and then when I started seeing, um, you know, Prince doing what he was doing, we caught on to him. I caught on to him via my mother. I just got home from school and she goes, hey, check out this song right here. And I'm thinking I'm listening to the emotions that were the backup band for Earth, Wind, and Fire, right? No, I was listening to Soft and Wet by Prince, and I'm like, oh, snap. Right, 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 right. Go get that at the record store. At the record store? <laughs> <laughs> right? I need Let's to go hear get a song. That. Let's hear yeah. a song. Let's hear a song. Okay, cool. So I, I'll play you, um, I'll play you guys Brother Man. Which yes, please the, do. Right, which would be the second release from Cosmic Soul. And, um, and the new album he's got coming out, of course, it's had to be pushed back because of all that is in 2020, but um, it's going to be released on vinyl. We're going to release Oh, uh, see, vinyl. that's what's up. See, that's, so that's, that's what's so up. That's fun, right? It is, yo, that's what's up. Yes. And we got a guy that um, that is um, doing all the artwork. Right, right. And uh, his name is uh, Solomon Art, and uh, he put together a real nice album jacket it's for me. It's got a definitely 70s definitely vibe, 70s like Parliament. an old funk 70s funk vibe. vibe, you know, yeah. So it's I just want to give him props and stuff, and, you know. That's beautiful. We need more of that. Yes. <laughs> real music again. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so here is Brother Man, the second release from Cosmic Soul. All right, let's hear it. I'm excited. I hope this is, is now. Good. Now this is a debut, correct? No, this one's not. But he, okay. he's playing a new one that no one's heard yet. Yeah, good. But these ones. are all off of the upcoming out, the upcoming vinyl that's going to come out. Right, awesome. from the Cosmic Soul mm -hmm. album. Yeah, awesome. So this awesome. Is awesome. Man, and this is uh, coming from one of my alias, the Space Jockey, and it's talking about the witness of Brother Man falling from the sky and unifying people. So here we go. Let's roll with it. I'm <laughs> 
Can you? Is there a way you could turn up the music just a little bit on your okay, end? Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Turn it up a little bit. But um, yeah, that's really cool. First of all, congratulations and kudos. I hear the yeah. cosmic <laughs> influence. I hear all your cosmic influences and all your space brothers and sisters on that. Um, and who who actually did all the music and where do you produce your music at? And tell me where you record at. Okay, so how the music is produced? The music is produced like straight from the head right all okay the sounds, all the sounds that you hear are straight from the head i translate them to my co-producer who is brian thomas yes he yes them for me. the yeah. exact arrangements that i'm playing so i'm producing it he gets a co-production credit because he's tweaking it for me he's my nod jock yes yes so I, I produce like george clinton everything is from the bass lines to the horn arrangements to the the bar settings of everything where the dropouts all that's from here so, yeah i do the same as well yeah yeah i get it so i write like a vision I, I write from a visionary aspect um there's a lot of storytelling you know because i'm always being interjected by something um sometimes me and vanessa we joke back and forth about her having conversations and she thinking i'm on another realm <laughs> we all are for sure yep yeah yeah, well, um, I, I recorded in uh, two different studios, actually. That was the second question I think you were asking me. Yes. One's in Minnetonka. We call that Collective One, and that is Brian Thomas's studio. Uh, okay. A cat named Troy Harrington. Mm -hmm. They got together. I met with them back in, uh, back in the Devotion CD that I recorded earlier. Uh, they submitted a song that they wanted me to rework for them. Uh-huh. Um, after re re reworking it for them, they uh, liked what I did and um, came on and helped them out with a few more tracks that they wanted to submit to different uh, licensing uh, companies and stuff like that, such and such. 
so in hand in hand, uh, me and Brian, we got together and said, hey, okay, uh, you've been helping me with yours. Um, why don't I help you with yours? So right, we, right, right. Oh, right. I said, okay, 15 tracks of Pulse. So that's what Cosmic Soul is. We did 15 tracks. Um, I wrote, um, I want to say 13 of the tracks, wrote, produced, arranged, and produced 13 of the tracks. But wow. There, there was a badass track that came to me via um, Brian mm -hmm. Troy and a cat named, um, oh, I can't think of his name right now. Oh, forgive me. Uh, anyway, um, it'll come back to me. Um, these guys uh, came up with One Love, the track that I um, actually released just recently. So um, they, they came up with this wonderful track, and I thought it was beautiful. It was about universal love and helping out the fellow man and all that stuff. That's right. That's right. Um, that's I, right. Cried, I cried the first time I heard it. I did, too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so I released that one about a month back on Facebook and, and a couple other places. But, yeah, I saw um, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah SoundCloud. Uh, but yep. I, I reworked it for them and sent it back to them, and they they cried. So they um so you know. And then you also worked with the studio with Ben Hilton. Right, right, right. Um, and then uh also backing up a second, um, you know, with the recent events of um everything that just happened with our brother George Floyd and um numerous of others that you know been meeting demise. I won't go too deep. Yeah. Please. Um, but. Uh, Black Boy is another one that I just recently released. Um, it was about the struggles of actually trying to stay upright, trying to stay balanced, trying to not listen to certain energies that can actually hinder yeah. you in your journey, um, that can deviate you, you know what I mean, so to speak. So you have to stay on course and uh, stay on station. So that was Black Boy's uh, journey. And um, it also talks about the struggles about being disrespect being dehumanized, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I released that, you know, but that song was actually written when I first got to Minneapolis. Yeah, um, yeah. Crossing the bridge from Savannah, catching a greyhound here. It's and funny you that, mentioned, oh, uh, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I was saying it's funny you mentioned Savannah because that's where my mother and father are from. And I've been down oh, there many oh, times oh, as, cool as a kid. That? Yeah, yeah, it is. I got family in Georgia and everything, but go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off, but um, yeah, Savannah is, is popping down there. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, another uh, producer I work with, other than Brian Thomas, is a cat that I worked with for ages since I, I won't go how far back. <laughs> but anyway, um, me and this cat, we we got a real big history as well. And um, African brother by the name of Ben Obi. Mm-hmm. Super badass producer here. Him and uh, yeah. B Cube used to be together um, in a studio that they actually launched here across Savannah Street Music back in the day. Um, okay. But now Ben Obi, he's been doing this and he's been upholding that name. And uh, Brother Palay, whose name was Kazir back in the day, um, they, he's doing this stuff collectively as well. Mm -hmm. There's so many badass artists that are here underground. Um, when I got here, I had the opportunity to work with Ingrid Chavez, um, a cat named Spark L. Anthony, uh, Frederick Thomas. I don't know if you recognize him from the group Natural Selection. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we had a track out. Do you think we got love and baby? I don't know if you remember that, but if you back in the it's back in the <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, so I was. We did a lot of stuff collectively, you know, and together, you know. Um, um, a cat named Dark Star. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, all these cats. Um, we all was doing stuff together. You know, yeah. and, and you know, just morphing. You know, um, but everybody's doing their own thing. And um, but this other cat, Benobi, we got a track that we produced. Um, I produced the original version of it with. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, Ben heard it and flipped out and said, "Let me take it to another level." So we are gonna drop his version on the album. Okay, that's Over what's up. Time. That's what's Over up. Over the, yeah, yeah we're, gonna, we're gonna drop that in London first. Yeah. Okay, now Vanessa, are you on any of this music? No. Hey, but no. I have a song that's about me. Yeah, yeah. But hey, that's all. That's yeah. good enough. I was amused for one of the songs. Right. right. Vendetta is about me. Have you seen right. that on Facebook? It's no, I have because I've been so all over the place lately with everything, but I'll catch up eventually with all yeah, the stuff. If you go back right to the page, I launched that about a week ago. I wrote that one about her and, and uh, dropped that one. I got a cat okay. from Bobby Snitzer. He's mm -hmm. a older gentleman. He's, he plays some stuff on my uh, previous CD. I had to go back to him because um, he's authentic as it gets. 
Right, right, right. And a ukulele like type vibe on it. Okay. Sitar. Yeah, like a sitar on it, and it's okay. got this ominous, like, you know, I, I kept hearing like a simulcast in my head going off. Like it's hypnotic. It's, it's very hypnotic. hypnotic. But yeah, it's called, yeah. V, it's called V for Vendetta. And it's ah, like, I know yeah. what that V is for, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa, for sure. So tell me, who do you love? That's the next um, track we're going to listen to, correct? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let, let's check that out. Let's check that out. You want to check out yeah, who do you yeah, love? Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's check out who do you love. Yeah. All right, so you, you said to turn it up. it up a little yeah. bit, right? Yes, please. Yes, yes. Okay, so let me see. Because we was getting um bottom but not top a little bit, so we just need a little bit more. And I, I'll let you know. You know, this is all good. We're playing as we go. Um, Here okay. we are with Emrel Andrews and Vanessa Bartholomew on Funk Music with Zach, IBM TV, y'all. <clears throat> all right. This is called Who Do You Love? There you go. You shouldn't play this game. That I like. You driving me insane. You must be ashamed to think I could trust you once again. That little stunt you pulled before damn it made me sin. Not another shot, not another one. You tried to do it and. I played the game, baby girl, I lost, and now it's time to win. Who do you love? I'm tripping on you. Who do you love? Good, very well. Who do I you love? love? I like that. I can hear, I can hear those influences. Like we all had them, we all grew up with them, and I can hear a lot of stuff that's in your music um, that you definitely threw in the pot, you know. And and as we grow and we learn and we produce and and you know we climb up this ladder, um, mm -hmm. you know, to try to get to that higher level of consciousness. I like how your music is representing um, all this positive stuff. Um, and a lot of the things that you speak about, 
um, because it's very important as artists, you know this, Vanessa knows this, you know, that we try to give people that positive stuff, especially now, you know yeah. what I mean? And in the midst of everything, and you guys are, and I'm not going to touch too hard on this, but you are at ground zero for George Floyd. You are in Minneapolis, right? And even though around all of this turmoil, you're still able to churn out this great music and this great vibe. And for that, I want to say I'm gracious to you both and thank you, especially for what you're doing, ML, because um, people will look up to you in that town and that state and understand like, you know, yes, we're in this heightened stress time and, you know, murderous, you know, racial tension time, protest and pandemic, but you're still doing something positive and the universe will bless you tremendously for that. Thank it's you. just the all the blessings in the blessing. world. Thank you. Yeah. All Thank the blessings in the world. All the blessings in the world. Yeah. You know, because yeah. um yeah and, and that's I just wanted to add that because that's very important that people actually know, you know, where you guys are and what's happening and, and what you're doing. And um who do you love? You know, I, I kind of like the hook and I'm feeling everything that you're doing in there. And um it, it kind of you know has that that 80s cosmic type thing that I can hear, yeah. you know, that you you were like, okay, I'm going to take this. Because that's what I do. I'm like, I'm going to take this, 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 and this from everybody. <laughs> I like the wah-wah pedal in there. Oh, I yeah, like the yeah. the wah-wah pedal in there. Wah, 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 totally wah, retro. Wah, wah, exactly, wah, wah. exactly, you know, exactly. Who, who do you love? Who do you love came to me in, in the strangest place. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually um, driving down County Road 42 to a liquor store one day, and I'm, I'm hearing boom, 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 boom. Right. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, constantly in my head, you know, and I and I called Brian. I said, Brian, I gotta get to you, man. I gotta get. He goes, he goes, you got something? I'm like, hell yeah, I got something, you know. <laughs> so um, and then the lyrics started coming to me, and guess who? After I wrote the lyrics, guess who came to me as being another influence of mine that I totally forgot to um mention to you earlier. Michael Hutchins from NXS was a okay. powerful influence of mine, along okay. with Dave Gone from Depeche Mode. I used to actually um, rehearse and rehearse and rehearse hours and hours listening to some of their content, which what I was intrigued by mostly. But their some tough stuff, yeah. And stuff. I used to love actually trying to trying to mimic some of these things. Um, trying to see what they were in their head, and um, some of that got in my uh, writing style along the way. Um, not that I was actually trying to directly copy them in any kind of way, but I think it was started to be something that became a component of my writing style, mm -hmm. you know, um, influenced by. So anyway, um, that was a vocal style that was influenced by Michael Hutchins from NXS. Okay, okay, that and I knew it was something that yeah. MTV ish <laughs> thing that was popping in my head. Now that makes sense. That that yeah. definitely makes a lot of sense. That's very cool. Hey, and not to blow up anybody, but guess what? Prince was also inspired by uh, Michael Hutchins' vocal style, too. Um, okay. He was a okay. fan, and he used it on Cream. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, that that's deep. See, now this these are the kind of inside things that only people from the MPLS <laughs> and the Prince camp know. So I hope Sorry, all y'all out there heard that. You're getting inside tidbits from the camp. Of right, the purple right, majesty. Right, so, right. you know what's funny? And I just want to tell you something. Like, growing up in Long Island in New York, that influence, right? We had to look to kind of the Midwest South to get all of that extra stuff because New York was so um, stressed, bent on pop, 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 top 10, 10. And we, you know, I had to order my mother's finest albums from Georgia. I had to, you know, get a lot of my Paul and Funkadelic stuff, you know, underground and go to Jersey and get it because New York was cool, but they would only play what they felt was the hits, which we all know was not true. So we had to go to places like the Midwest where you are, guys are, right? To get our slave, to get our stuff like that, to get all the Ohio players stuff. Yeah, we could get fire, but you know, we had to really dig deep across the country to get all this great music. And I always envy people in your area. I call it the Midwest stomp funk ground because you guys had it all. You were right in that zone, right in the middle of the country and you could get that and you could get that. And, and, and I was like, man, you know, because I listened to a lot of stuff that, that came out of that that era 
and that area. And I was like, well, Slave was there. You know, of course, Prince was there. You know, Bootsy Collins, the Ohio Plays, the Ozzy Brothers, all in that corridor. I call it the funk corridor. You know, here we were on the East Coast. And yes, we had a few stuff, but it wasn't the same. And I just wanted to tell you, we on Long Island, on the East Coast, was always coming to your area of the United States to get our serious funk. Let me tell you, that's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. Let me tell you something about the East Coast that a lot of people didn't know that uh, Prince was very big in the Southeast. Mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of uh, friends down there. We were big on uh, Prince. Me, a cat named Romeo Black, Torellio, uh, Michael Sampson, all of us back in the day, a cat named Bosco. We all imitated those guys, Prince, the time, and we got so good at it that we had a following down there and a lot of people wanted to see us prosper. Now, I made it my business to get out of there because I knew I had to take what I had in my head a little bit further and had yeah. to on site because of the fact that um, when you were outside looking at Minneapolis back then, um, you saw Jesse Johnson coming out of here, springing off of the time. You had the time itself. You had uh, Tamara in the scene. You had Maserati. You had uh, Jill Jones. You had Sheila E. Yes. Had you six. So you were looking out and you were seeing all these people. And you were like, I got to get there. I got to be <laughs> on site. You know, I got to be on site. So um, let me tell you what happened with me. I um, was working at the Hyatt Regency and I had a, uh, at a restaurant uh, called The Windows, and right next to us, we had a restaurant called Magic Porch. And me and this soul sister, we would always run into each other in the back corridors where you take the bus or pans and all that stuff back there. Um, and she was like, Ermel, you know, if you ever read really serious about your music, I got a cool ass uncle who lived in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. Here's his number. I'll call him and tell you, you call him, and all this stuff. You're going to love him. And like, so get this, right? I get on the Greyhound about a week later. The Greyhound. <laughs> All this stuff, the minute I got off the Greyhound, dude, I thought I was getting ready to get blown off, you know, and dismissed. So let me tell you this shit, right? I get I get here. This cat answers the phone. His name is Spark L. Spark L. Anthony. He he makes a long short story short. He goes, hey, man, listen, I'm at work right now. I can't talk to you. But listen, I got a key underneath the mat, right? You go and let yourself in. And um, by the way, rest up a little bit because it's Thursday. It's more funk night, nigga. We go on the first Avenue. I'm like, right. shit. So that was my introductory to First Avenue. On that state, uh, on that uh, first day, I met Ingrid Chavez. Mm -hmm. She came around. We Frederick Thomas. We all vibe. Started talking about music. That was my first day in Minneapolis. And that was right. Crazy. Right. Wow. Yeah, That's deep. It's the First okay. Avenue that night. Yeah. yeah. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. Yeah. And um, everybody knows First Avenue, obviously, you I, know, world world you renowned. Minneapolis now, back in that day, um, it ain't like how it is now because you couldn't even drive on Hennepin on a Friday or a Saturday night because it looked like Ebor City in Florida <laughs> where everybody was just migrating in the streets. You think it's a Mardi Gras and shit going on, but just the vibe, you mm -hmm. know. Um, you couldn't drive through it, but you could definitely park on the side right, streets and walk down. And yeah, yeah uptown. Yeah, it was the vibe of uptown. That's what it was. Yeah. 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 Wow, that's deep. So let so let me ask you, this next song feels good. All right. What's the inspiration and the motivation behind that Ooh, one? Oh, okay. You remember we talked about Brian Thomas earlier mm -hmm. and Troy Harrington? Okay. Um, they had another song that they were working on. Now the music is the same music, but I had to rearrange the music around what I wanted to put lyrically. What they sent me was um, just a hook they had in their head. I won't buy unless you're the break it high. And that's what they had in their head for it. I said, okay, well, I'm gonna use the hook for you, but let me put my spin on it and let me see what I can do with it. So I worked with it for like probably like three days. Mm -hmm. So um, I was listening to, I don't know why, for some strange reason, George Michael's new song, um, what was it, Bass Love? Um, Bass Love got in my head, and it reminded me of the song that Brian and Troy had did. And also that backdrop that George Michael was using. Send me to get me lost. Oh, right, right, right. The Patrice Russian thing. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. 
So George Michael had the um, Fast Love song out, and that was playing over and over in my head subliminally. By the time Brian and Troy submitted this song to me, um, it felt so familiar to actually brighten up the song and take that I Won't Bite and put it in a brighter spot and lift it up. So, um, and I was really feeling good about what I was doing with the song in the end. So I said, I'm gonna call it Feels Good. And the first thing that came out of my head was, Feels good, baby. Feels good, baby. Let's let him hear. So we're gonna let right. let's, yeah, yeah. let's go with that. Let's do that. Feels yes. good. Yeah, so you'll recognize some of the um some of the um feel of it. Okay. Okay. Let's roll with it. So let's go to feels good. Here we go. Uh, I like this one. Feels good. Yeah. Can you hear the volume? Yeah, you can turn it up though. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Y'all, y'all totally got that Ashford and Simpson thing, but it ain't even about that. It's Ermel and Vanessa. Y'all got that thing popping, that thing, man. Now, I'm serious. It's coming across on the screen. I'm going to have to do a whole nother show just to talk about you guys. But, um, oh my God. <laughs> but no, because see, but, but here's the people need to see love. You know, people Thank need you. that. They, they People are afraid now to reach out and touch and see that. To me, it's beautiful. Um, and that song feels good. I listened to that one last night. Um, you know, before I went to sleep, I wanted to have some of your music in my head. And and then I was just like bouncing to it, you know, and it kind of put me in a, it put me in this really happy place. Um, you know, just like walking in the park, you know, um, tell, telling people hello and smiling and all that other, other stuff. And sometimes, and you know this as an artist and so do you Vanessa um, as an artist, um, simplicity is what people sometimes can really grasp you know, less is more theory. You know, we hear that in the studio all the time. And the hook is so simplistic, yet it's so complicated because anything can be made to feel good if you make it yeah. feel good. That's you know? what I told him. I, I told him that with that song, I picture like someone getting ready to go to work and they listen to that and they'll feel motivated. Someone getting out of work and it's their Friday and they get motivated. You know, I always put on music when I clean. Yeah. You know, that comes with upbringing. And hey, but I can um, put that on. Whatever you're doing, that song you can put on and you will feel good, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I love it. Right, and that was that three, that was that song that Brian and Troy wrote the music for that. Okay. He arranged the music for that to fit the lyric structure and the arrangement of it. But those guys, they wrote that music and they, you know, they, they sent it to me and it, it felt good to me when I heard it. It feels good. I mean? <laughs> Yeah, it does. It's a natural. It's such a natural. It's got a, it's got that bounce to it. And I noticed you incorporate a lot of the elements of the hip hop, a little bit of the street. You know, I hear a little bit of that Georgia swag down there because I know that's that Savannah <laughs> swag. I hear that, you know, Midwest thing, you know, the West East Coast. And your stuff is so global. Um, you know, and I and I mentioned, and you mentioned before, rather, you get ready to drop something over in England. Tell me a little bit about that. We got a little bit more time left. We're going to make sure we get both your two songs in as well. Um, but you know, so we can go over a little bit. So don't stress about that. But tell me a little bit about that that connection over in Europe, because I find that to be very helpful to a lot of young artists. Yeah, well, you know, um, Dia Benobi, he worked with a lot of uh, artists that he flew back over uh, with, you know, that he worked with in the UK. And um, he had an idea to actually present one of the tracks over there, you know, off the album. Mm -hmm. He knew about the Cosmic Soul album when we presented Brother Man and all that stuff to him, the mix. Um, he didn't have any involvement on it, but um, I like his mixing on it. And we had it mastered over there as well. So, um, you know, we, we were listening to uh, one of the tracks of Lilius that I mentioned. And uh, he said, let's, let's present this to some of our people over in London. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm network of a lot of artists and stuff that they kind of collectively embody to actually try to promote over there. Um, so this is what we were going to try to do with that track. And um, everything kind of got like sidelined with this whole COVID thing. You know? and once that came into play, everything had to take a back seat. Everything got put you on know, hold. pressing yeah. for the disc. You, you know, yeah. And, and, and you know, it's funny because and we don't have to worry about, you know, our time constraints. I just wanted to make you aware I'm not rushing you or nothing like that. So don't stress over that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're family. And, you know, you're part of the IBM TV family. Again, we're with Emeril and um, Vanessa out of the MPLS. You guys are so beautiful. And thank you so much. Um, you know, you're getting a lot of compliments. I'm trying to follow these chats, this and that. So, you know, um, and, and, and and getting back to the pandemic, um, it affected all of us as entertainers, artists, whatever, sports figures. And I'm not going to get into other areas of work, just ours particularly, right? And um, what we have to try to do now is figure out alternative ways, you know, to get our music out. Mm -hmm. And because of the, the internet and social media, it still allows us to be productive, right? And I find that to be a blessing almost in disguise, not given no, to what happened. How do you feel about that? Because that's something that, um, you know, we were vibing on before when we were speaking privately on the phone. And thank God we have social media now. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you how I feel exactly about it um, directly. I feel great and I feel great to be in this spot where 
the pioneer who actually exploited the internet through music and actually promoted his stuff on the internet was the guy that put this place on the map. Of course. My prince, your he was the first one. I tell people that. He was first. He was first. Yeah. He was the first yeah. one. Yeah. So I feel very good about that, sir. Yes. Yeah. 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 You know, because when he first went digital and we were all thinking about it, looking at it, and how do we join this and get into Paisley Park and all this stuff that he was doing, mm -hmm. right? We was like, this is way ahead of his time. You know yeah. what I mean? And that, that innovative brother that touched us all, believe me, he did. Oh, the yeah. whole the whole universe. Um, and he comes to me in dreams sometimes. Um, he wanted to lay a roadmap for you, for me, for Vanessa, for everybody else. And now here we are. Here, and we, are. here we are. Here we are. You know, and I'm sure yeah. right now he's tuning in on this interview, saying, yeah. All right, let, let, let me let me see, let me see what no, let me see what he got. <laughs> Let me see. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and like I said, I'm very fortunate to have you on the show. It's amazing. And we got a lot more to talk about. Um, I wanted to get into, um, as far as your, your formats, where can people actually find your music? Um, where are you located? What social media outlets? Let people know what's going on. Okay, well, definitely you can find me on Spotify. We dropped some of the content there from Cosmic Soul, the upcoming album. Um, at most of the content, I've actually, um, you know, with the whole COVID thing being sidelined, I had no choice but to actually start releasing some of the content because we got sidelined. Right. Um, so I have about six releases from the album out of the 15 that are already on SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Awesome. Um, so yeah, that's Ermel. the uh, yeah. Thank you. If you type you. in Ermel uh, and put in Cosmic Soul, it will take you to... It'll take that. you right to him, and, and you can find stuff from his, his other albums also. Yeah, yeah. Stuff he's doing some now. Of, some of the Devotion CD is on there as well, the previous disc. So you can find some of the earlier work. Facebook. Some of, he now, has the Ermel Facebook. Some of the, first, uh, some of the first uh, album I did, Devotion, I co-produced five tracks with Matt Fink. Okay. And, wow. And, Love yeah, Matt. And five with Ben Obi. And okay. uh, Brian Thomas, the co-producer on my new album, you know, with me, um, he had, you know, a few tracks that we submitted on there as well. Yeah. So yeah. we even did a track for Alexander O'Neill that we submitted to him, but it got rejected because his people claimed they already had enough work on the album. And so it was a placement issue, they said it was. So I grabbed it back and threw it on here. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? It's, yeah. and not for nothing, I love him, but it's their loss. You know what I'm saying? It's their loss. You know, music yeah, is right. music will always find where it's supposed to be. It Absolutely. will always find its spot like water. It'll find yeah. its level. Yeah. It will find yeah. a spot. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Let me tell you, I know, I know. I'm telling you the truth. It will. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So so check this out. Um, have you ever been to like New York to really, really get down um, and, and see what's popping over there? Because um, I live in North Carolina, but, you know, I'm a native New Yorker. I only been down here for four years. Right. And, you know, um, if we do something up there, man, I'd love to have you come up and do something with us. You know what I, I mean? For sure. For sure. Yeah, sure. yeah. I'd love to have, you know, we got a full band, you whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, see, see, got to have that, you right, know, right. two one one in the house. <laughs> yeah, I would love to come to New York and do some stuff. You yeah. know, as a matter of fact, yeah, I love um, New York. you're going to um, probably see me simulcast the actual CD listing party soon. Okay. And we're planning the poorhouse in Uptown. Okay, yes. Yeah. Everybody's going uptown. You know that, right? Yeah. You have to go uptown. That's where it is. Uptown. Right. right. Yeah. So we want to we would have planned it there on their main stage. It kind of looks like a Saturday night live vibe, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Can, That'll yeah, work. That. So listen. I want to simulcast that um to Savannah so my hometown can see it at the same time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's another good thing with the internet is yeah, that you virtual. know we can we're all in the matrix like this. Now. We're all in the matrix. <laughs> That's right. And, and you know, it's not a bad place, you know, and believe it or not, I know about the movie, never seen it, but I get it because I've been living the matrix ever since I've been down on this planet. I know, I know, I know, I know, yeah, I know, I know. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Yeah. So so tell me about before we get to the next couple of songs, tell me about anything new that you're working on with other artists um, that you may be involved with? 
You got anything new on the horizon with anybody else or are you just right now doing your thing? Right now, I'm still doing my thing because, you know, I've, um, I'll give you the reason why. I've been in support of a lot of artists, you know, and I made it purposely my agenda to actually, you know, take the back seat, you know, because mm -hmm. um, you learn a lot more when you're trying to just observe versus trying to be the forefront all the time. I, I, um, I learned a lot that way, and, you know. Yeah. Coming here, I had the opportunity, like I said before, to actually um, do a lot of cool stuff with a lot of um, cool people, you know, and um, learned a lot, and they learned a lot from me as well, and had the wonderful opportunity to experience that. So, you know, when you're not trying to push yourself out there all the time and take a backseat, you can actually observe and see what you do and what you don't do. You know what I mean? <laughs> what you want to project and what you don't want that so you you know you learn along the way and these become those little um components or ingredients to actually um projecting the version of you that you want to be right. you know yeah you know what you want to contribute to the masses i know what i want to contribute to the masses that's um agape love and universal love and i want people to be able to look at this body of work like five ten years back and say guess what Brother was in a positive place and wanted to take us to a positive place. Destination yeah. threshold. Yeah. That's it. That's so it. And you know that that that's what it's 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 really all about. Um, you know, um, people are loving your music. I'm I'm trying to read some of the comments and things like that. They love the vibe. Um, and and I kind of preempted people. I said, listen, you know, I got two doves coming on. You know what I'm saying? They're just like so <laughs> universally into this this love thing. You know, which which helps keep the energy, the right energy flowing. Yeah. Um, this is why we need artists like you. Please always keep pushing that music envelope, brother, because, um, you know, that that's what the world needs. That's why we're down here, you know. Um, we got this thing called Zone. You have this thing called Zone. Not me, we, Ooh, you. <laughs> you got this thing called Zone, right? Ooh, zone. Now, zone. zone. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, you want to hear something really trippy about the song? Yeah, I don't know if we we can use the word forthcoming, but it must have been something I felt because um, one day I was at work, and um, I, I had the song in my head. I'm at work, and I hardly got any volume coming down my belt, you know. And I work at night, you know, and um, and I'm hearing. <laughs> constantly in my head, like a little wave tone, you know? And I was thinking, you know, at first, the sound that they used from the song, Why You Treat Me So Bad by Club Nouveau. Right, right, right. Murky, that kind of murky wave tone, like sound. So that was the melody I was hearing in my head. And then I start hearing, think about your passion, baby, baby. Cool, baby, girl, you trap crazy. You know, kind of like a Pharrell on top of a Prince-like inspired vocal. And I'm like, oh, snap, I got to I gotta play with this. And I kept on hearing the, the little wave tone sound in my head. So I had to get with Brian and, and explain to Brian what I was hearing. And Brian laid it down just fine. Now, let me tell you about this cat. He's my tweaker. He's my knob jockey. He calls me the space jockey, but he's the knob jockey. This guy has all these effects where you hear him dipping in and dipping out, fading out, sounding cosmos. This is what he did on this song. So, um... Yeah, play that. Play that for us. I'd like to hear it. Zone. Okay, so the zone. Here we go. It's just a matter of time before you Oh, 
zone so that had like a kind of a, a club hip-hop bounce feel to it but i'm loving the fact that you have your own style for sure for sure for sure and and that's i think one of the keys to um being a a a satisfied artist you know not about how much you may try to sell or not sell but when they put it on they're going to know it's you you know and that 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 means a lot um, when I hear somebody doing that, you know, I, I, I always think back to what I was taught years and years ago about music. And um, it, it really means a lot to hear that, you know, and, and I'm, you know, it's like, you know, when you hear it and then people identify you with that, mm -hmm. it, it puts you in that that other upper category. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you're just like not trying to be all this other stuff, even though we learned all that from other right. people. You just got your own thing, man. And now that you've developed your style and you know you got that popping and you've been in the game for a minute and doing on your own stuff, when you go out and perform, do you take live musicians or do you go out and do track in live or do you just do track? What What is your, your preference, I should what say? Your yeah, what is your preference. preference. Yeah, what is your preference? When, when I record? No, no, when, no, when you go out and you're doing your live stuff. When I do my live stuff, I prefer actually band. I actually prefer live band along right. with the tracker. Along with the track, you know, right, right, right. I have a tracker because um, I have a lot of sounds and stuff that me and Brian, we work with. I, you know, I, mm -hmm. I support um, very vision, uh, from a visionary aspect. So I want people to not only, um, um, you know, when they hear it, I want people to go somewhere. I want them to be able to follow where we're going with the song. So there's more than just the actual lyrical content. There's a lot of transmissions that we put behind the actual. Lyrics yeah, and yeah. So I, I would have to have a tracker you know, as well as a DJ. I prefer DJs, uh, you know, as well, you know. Yeah, because yeah. Because yeah. I have a lot of content that I use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually using that for the first time myself. Well, when we was going to go out this year, I actually was going to have my guy, you know, be on stage scratching too. That's that's very cool. I really, really um, am digging your vibe and you guys are amazing people. Before we get to this last track, Black Boy, which, you know, um, you know, obviously we were saving that one for last. It means a lot. But yeah. um, what what inspirational words would you have for the young and up and coming artists that really want to be in this game and be successful like you guys? Well, the first thing I would tell that up and coming artist is to listen to their inner soul, listen to their stay true to yeah, self. Stay true to self. Do not don't deviate. conform. Don't deviate because here's the deal. Once you deviate from that true self, you're going to know for a fact that you stray because you're going to be doing what everybody else wants you to do. And you're not going to be you're the one that's satisfied. happy. You're not going to be yep. happy. So that's yep. the number one thing. Stay true to self. The second thing I would say, don't sell out. That's almost saying the same thing, but in reverse. Don't mm -hmm. sell out. We got a lot of dark forces in the actual recording industry right now. Thank you. That Thank you. We love to bond us up and, and mm -hmm. not take us to where and we And that's where the be. internet can come so, in handy, where right. you can make music, get your name thing. out there, all that good stuff. But the, yeah. yeah. 
third thing I would probably say to make sure when you're writing, try to make sure that you um, write from various styles and don't pigeonhole yourself into one type of style or let someone else pigeonhole you into that one type of style. You're, you're even, you got to keep in mind that even though you are a human being, you are a spiritual being first and foremost. That's you're right. Bound, you're not bound to the elements of down here. You have That's to, right. You come from another realm. And you because have the, the soul living this earthly yeah. experience. Yeah, you have, <laughs> yeah, you have the, you have the, <laughs> you know, you're riding and go various So places. don't be afraid. Yes, you know yes, what I mean? Step yes. out of your comfort zone. Kick that safety net out. And, right. You know, just live this journey. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's an easy journey if you allow it to be, you know. That's right. That's right. That's right. I, I follow Vanessa as well a lot. We talked a lot on Facebook and stuff. And you've always had that that atmosphere. When I heard you on Princess Music and this and that, I was like, you know, this person, this spirit, this person, this woman is in there, like up there. That's why I was so trying to connect on Facebook well, like that. I've because I've been here many times. You yes. know, I feel like I've been here many times. Yes, yes, so yes. I think, I, you know, you meet people and you're like, okay, this is probably their first time here, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's trying yeah. to tell who, he, we say that, he always says, yeah. I. he says his soul feels like it's been here since the last brick of the pyramid. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you it's know, true. You become more and more enlightened, you know what I mean? And, and regardless of that, I mean, you just keep in mind that you're a soul living this human experience, you know? And yep. so just knowing that, what is it you can't do? Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? We limit ourselves. Yeah, we yeah, can, yes, we do. People don't realize you control your mind. Your right, mind right. don't control you. Yeah. But most people let their mind control them instead of vice versa and knowing they control you you control all of this here right, in this right. shell. That's right. You know? That's right. Everybody That's right. wants to be in this shell. So do all you can while you're here, you know, because yes. we don't remember if we oh, lived yes. before and we don't know if we're living, you know, so you may as well enjoy this journey while you're here. Yeah. That's right. And you know what? That's exactly what IBM TV is about. So I'm so glad you said that. Um, okay. Let's get to Black Boy and play that track, but set it up a little bit before you play your last track for us. Okay. Okay. Black Boy. Black Boy was... um written on a promise, um, a, a promise to two, two entities, my mother, God bless her soul, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I was in the eighth grade and I, I was sitting up in the desk and I remember finishing my assignment early and I, you know, I had already gotten deep into music, you know, the whole parliament, funkadelic stuff. And I said, Lord, I know I love this stuff and I know this is a gift that you've given me to, you know, want to actually be what I want to be, but I'm going to make a promise. I'll never make music my God. I'll always put you first and I'll never make music my God. So that was the first promise. And um, Black Boy came into my head right there. And then um, as I was leaving Savannah, something my mother told me, she said, now when you get on the bus, don't ever look back, you know. Don't ever look back. And you know, I realize now that's a metaphor. Yes. Don't live, don't look back on, you know, giving up on your dreams and all that stuff. This is what's in you. You've got to go do it. It's never going to leave you alone. And I want you to pursue it and go out there and get it. Never look back. So I came to Minneapolis and I was thinking about every word that she said to me. And, um, as I was writing the songs, some of her words came to me and I just thought back to the eighth grade, black boy. Because that was the first thing I said after that prayer to God, black boy, you know? So that's how this song came to me and I wrote it before I came to Minneapolis. Okay. And, um, recorded it just recently and had the opportunity to release it because of the struggles that a lot of us black brothers are facing with the equal, unequal justice and inequality and you know, and you know, the unfairness. It's and, personal. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. So, you know, I figured, you know, I know a lot of people are feeling it and a lot of people are struggling with mm -hmm. what I struggled with. Um, release it. Give it to, give it up. Give it to the people and just let the people have it. So this is that song. Well said. Well said, my friend. Well said, my brother. All right, brother. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, 
Yo, that's amazing, man. That that that's bravo, bravo. Um, that that is some amazing, amazing, um, inspirational, spiritual, cosmic, soul junky stuff. You know what I mean? It's, um, it's 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 very very you know well done and and you know kudos and congratulations to all your hard work and and much much success. You know, thank, thank you, you so much. Um, you know, and we'll be in touch and, you know, we'll chat up. Um, thank you so much for being thank on you. Funk Back today you. on IBM TV. And, um, you know, again, just give us one last shout out to where they can find your music on Facebook and things of that nature and where you're located. Um, yes, let them know. You can find me on SoundCloud as well, Spotify. Most of the content is on SoundCloud at the moment. Yep, Ermel and yes, SoundCloud. Yes. And you can also find us on the Soul Junkies channel. Oh, as well. on YouTube. Soul That's Junkies right. on YouTube. That's yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> okay, you yeah, know, send me all of that. Ermel page too on Facebook as well. So they okay, 
Yeah, okay, yeah. send it off to me and I'll repost it on my page too, just to let people know where they can find your music. Um, as I spotlight the artists and, and people that come on, I just want to make sure you guys, you know, people know where to find your stuff at because- You can um, find me at Peace, Love, and Prince on YouTube also. Yes. If you're Prince okay. people up in here. Yes, and I, I, I peeped that, I peeped that. I did yeah, peep it. Right. So, you know, a lot of times I don't always come on, but I'm watching stuff and, you know, I'm paying attention to, to what what what's going on out there. Yeah. Um, Again, mad shouts out. Thank you. Um, Thank you know, you. stay Much safe. Love. Love. Um, mad love to the MPLS. And you guys are, are you know, amazing. And um, I definitely want to have you back on soon. You know, come on. And next time, you got to pick up your guitar. And we're going to go that route, too, and get oh, a little nice, live nice, stuff. Nice. Yes, 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 for sure, for sure. And you can, you know, we can do Unplugged. And you can just, you know, um, maybe we can write something. You can just go live. And we just cool. hit it. You know, we could do that for sure. Okay, guys? Definitely yes. open to okay. that. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you have a blessed, a blessed day and enjoy. We will. Hey, we will. God bless you. Have a super blessed day, guys. God bless you. All right, bye. Take care. Peace out. Yes, that was Merrill Andrews and um, Vanessa Bartholomew live from the MPLS on Funk Music with Zach today on IBM TV. Um, it was a beautiful, beautiful afternoon. Um, you know, they played some really, really great songs. Um, they they told us some, some really great stories. And they're actually from, you know, MPLS, um, you know, really raw with, with um, the George Floyd thing. And it just goes.